Welcome everybody to week one, day three, take three of this attempt. Um, I can't reveal students' names online, so we're going to do this one more time. Uh, if you're not getting messages from the attendance spot, you need to leave the server, turn on this uh, privacy setting here, rejoin the server, and then make sure you retag yourself for CSI 1, and then everything will be hunky dory. I will clean up people's um, I'll clean up people's attendance records that are missing. Anything you won't you won't lose any attendance. You're not gonna be penalized for our technical uh, snafus. It is highly experimental prototype AI technology that we're working with here. And uh, by the way, Walker is doing all this for free. It's not like I'm paying him. So please, you know, uh, thank him. You know, for for putting in all this effort for trying to help help you guys out. Um, uh, so the uh, the other thing is like if you if you don't care about getting a DM or not. Uh, basically, it, it'll still record your attendance, and um, and if you ever feel like uh, you contributed but you didn't get credit for attendance, just message Walker and he can manually uh, edit your grade up, um, or or message me as well. So it's a uh, you know it, it's a different experience doing class on Discord than on Zoom, and uh, I realize that. But also, um, my students voted for for Discord like. The, you know, my students had a lot of experience working on both Zoom and Discord in, at Clovis Community College, and they overwhelmingly voted to do classes on, on Discord because they find it better. So, um, you got a message on the first day, but nothing on the second day. What does Walker run on? Uh, <laughs> is that a pun? I don't know. Um, guys, no one got a DM from the bot on Wednesday. I'm pretty sure the bot wasn't working. Uh, so, anyhow, so he's, he's working on, on, on the thing. And um, we'll be. Uh, it should be. It should be fine going forwards. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the attendance later today. And so just check your uh, grade on Discord and see if uh, you were given credit for everything you should be cr given credit for. If you have added the class uh, late, then uh, you'll have to message me because you'll you'll be given like participation for one day instead of three days. Um, although we've only had two days of participation so far, because technically the current day's participation doesn't s stop until Monday. So um, if you got one day's participation out of two, then and just be like, "Hey, I added late. Just message me. I'm a nice guy. Um, I will I will fix it for you." And uh, hopefully we won't have anybody adding after this point, um, because you know every every time somebody adds, I have to come in and unlock the old quizzes and do a lot of do a lot of stuff if it's server ig he could tell us i don't know uh how do you check your grade on discord so if you uh, not it's on canvas so go on uh, so discord's a place where we do lectures and class participation everything else is on canvas we have uh um all the youtube video links are posted there the uh, assignments are posted there and then your grades will be on canvas as well there's a grades tab you can click and it'll show you uh i didn't say we all only participate on one day um no, no, no grades on Discord. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, can we check Canvas to see if we got participation? Yeah, they're not. There, there's currently no participation grades on Canvas because we're working out this whole bot situation, and I beg for your um, indulgence and tolerance and patience as we get re get everything sorted out. But I promise you that if you participated, you're not going to be penalized. You know, worst case scenario, I just go through manually and enter go through the chat logs on discord and see which days you you participated and and do it all manually so you're not you're not going to lose any points i promise okay um will we be going over the quiz yes we will so any other questions about the participation on here and so just say again say something substantial in that window between the start of one class and the start of the next class and you will be given your participation points okay uh the uh, the quiz uh, uh, yeah <laughs> Grinch animated gif so uh, so to be correct if we do not get notified or get it we talk to you about it uh, you, even if you don't get a notification you're the only time you should message me is when the grades go in if you see that you're missing participation points so you can go into the grade section it'll show you um, three out of three or whatever. You know, if you got two out of three, then you're missing one, and then you would contact me. 
if you if you have the bot blocked on the messages, then um, it's not a big deal. It doesn't need to message you to give you to give you points. Okay. I got some more to say about the bot, Kearney. Go for it, Walker. All right. So I don't know if you guys are watching my stream or not. I would say Kearney don't because I need to restart the uh, recording for the fourth time. Recording. Yeah. <laughs> But I changed the error message that it checks. Now it just checks if the HTTP uh, exception fails. And if it does that, it'll send it just in the uh, chat channel, which is the CSI1 chat channel, and it will just at you in there and tell you that your attendance was taken. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's a really good and, solution. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, if you should have gotten attendance, like you think you should have three, just message me, and I'll make the command to manually go in a... Well, there's only two so far, right? Monday to Wednesday and Wednesday to Friday, all right? Because the bot's offline right now, because Monday I'm going to run it at 10 a.m. to have it work like actual attendance for class. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so then just message me, I'll make a list, and then I can just make the command. And I'll just be able to manually adjust it. And then the bot should just work. Okay, so... Long story short for everybody, don't worry about the attendance until after Monday, I guess. Is that yeah. Is that reasonable, Walker? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys, you guys all cool? We, we good with that? It's, uh, it's the penalty for being at the bleeding edge of technology. Okay. Yeah, then remember, if after class you weren't receiving messages, even though you had enabled the uh, DMs for people in the server, you can either just not accept DMs, it doesn't matter. It will message you in the CSI1 channel. It will just mention you. Or you have to leave the server and then rejoin and then re-add the CSI1 role, which is up to you if you want to do that. But you have to, now the bot will message you if it fails, just in the chat channel. It'll, it, you, but when, when you've disconnected, you have to enable allow direct messages from server participants, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then you rejoin. Yes. Okay, so you should just worry about this after Monday, correct? Yeah, don't worry about yes. it. Don't worry about it for now. It, worst case scenario, I I'd be a bad computer science major and just do it by hand. Computer science is all about automating things and not wasting your time. But you know, if I have to, I have to. Your grades are important. Huh. Okay, so let's talk about the quiz. Thank you, Walker, and everybody, please uh, clap emoji Walker. Like I said, he's not getting uh, paid for this. Uh, I'm not sure I got my attendance for the last two classes. Yeah, yeah. Just don't don't worry about it until Monday, and we'll we'll get everything. Um, everything should be sorted out by then. Okay. And All then, right. if you ever wanted to see the source code, you can just message me, and I'll just send it to you. Yeah, this this new quiz tool is so annoying. Like, you click on a quiz, and it doesn't show you the questions. You have to go down to build, and then. Um, and then where do you get a moderate reports, quiz and item analysis? Okay, so here's here are the quiz results for Wednesday. You might notice that the uh, the yeah, two two true or false questions too. So uh, letting people game the system <laughs> that's true. Yeah, show it, show it to them after the uh, after the semester's over. How highly advanced our AI technology is. So um, you might notice that people did very badly on this, and uh, that was quite quite deliberate. Okay. So uh, the uh, the first question was true or false? Trump's executive order one three nine five zero titled executive order on combating race and sex stereotyping specifically banned the use of terms critical race theory, white privilege, intersectionality, systemic racism, and unconscious bias from any training or materials used by institutions receiving federal funding of any kind. And there is um, a source from here. This is from the San Diego Museum of Us, formerly known as the San Diego Museum of Man, which uh, changed its name to the Museum of Us to make it more inclusive. Uh, but it's actually not from them. Uh, their blog is actually from the American Association, sorry, the American Alliance of Museums. And uh, this is a statement pr uh, put out by the American Alliance of Museums in October of last year in response to Trump's Executive Order 13950. Uh, which you don't list the number here on. Actually, I did dig that up myself. So, true or false, it says that. And here's a source, and it says uh, here, uh, President of the United States issued an executive order 
which among other things bans the use of the terms critical race theory, white privilege, intersectionality, systemic racism, and unconscious bias, and in any training or materials used by institutions receiving federal funding of any kind. There you go. First paragraph. Clearly it's true. Clearly it's true. Because why would the American Association of Museums lie about something like that, right? So, um, yeah, a lot of people put true, and it was wrong. And the reason why it's wrong is because this press release is wrong. I didn't, I didn't say, um, yeah, I didn't even say this is the source. I just said it's a claim. So a claim is a statement about reality. So the claim here, uh, the claim here is... Uh, and then some people said, oh, were you talking about diff the difference between specifically banned and among other things? No, no, no. None of this appears in the executive order at all. So if you if you open up executive order 13950, uh, yeah, I don't know. If, if you open it up, then uh, do this. Let's just search for it, I guess. <laughs> can't connect to the federal register that's fantastic um, yeah if you if you pull up there you go um, if you pull up the executive order control F critical doesn't appear anywhere on there intersectionality doesn't appear anywhere on there none of those terms appear anywhere within this document so none of these terms appear in the document okay so it is a completely false uh, claim the uh, to be charitable to them there was a memo put out by the administration that um, interpreted the executive order and was giving guidance on what kinds of terms would be banned by federal training and those things did pop up in the sort of guidance memo on what the executive order was about but the executive order itself did not ban the use of these terms they do not appear anywhere within the executive order and so um, the reason why I did this was because a museum is a trusted authority and even more trusted than a single museum is a association of museums right the, the American Alliance of Museums is a group of uh, uh, a lot of it, like 500 museums around the country, something like that. So, uh, yeah, just wrong, it's just a wrong claim. And so if you want to be a critical thinker, it's more than just like finding a source that says something. The, um, the original, the primary document is the golden rule. If you want to be a critical thinker, when a claim is made, you actually look at, um, made it a bit tense during the quiz to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I, I didn't put a time limit on it for that reason. Like for a lot of quizzes, I put a time limit on it. But for this one, I wanted you guys to have uh, all the time in the world to dig in and to determine if something is true or false. So the, uh, um, Let's see, uh, I was reading about Biden revoking it, had trouble finding the executive order. I know. Yeah, it's not on the White House. Like, if you if you follow the link off the press release, that uh, executive order no longer appears on the White House website because we have a new president now. And so, you know, it's it's a thing, you know? It's, it's a real thing where you have to dig and find. And that's that exercise of, like, actually trying to get out the primary document to see if a claim is true or not is sort of the prime, most important part of being a critical thinker, right? Everything else follows from that. You know, you need to dig into and find out what reality is. What was actually said in that executive order, you know? And uh, uh, I discovered this when a friend of mine on Facebook posted that um, um, uh, Texas basically copied the executive order and he said, this is the temperature at which freedom burns, which is a Fahrenheit uh, 451 reference or whatever. Five, four. Fahrenheit 451, is that it? Yeah. Um, 
and he he repeated the same claims and and the you know I, I looked at the Texas bill either and they didn't they didn't have them in there and so I'm like I'm, a, I'm like where is this coming from you know and um, as far as I can tell what they come from is from the memo issuing guidance to federal agencies that's I think where these um, these things came from so to, again to be charitable like it's not like they're I don't think they were deliberately lying. I think they just got confused as to what what was said where, basically. Control F is OP. That's why I get online books. Yeah. Okay. So true or false? Hillary said, and it, and again, uh, I am aggressively neutral in this class. So this one is about a misstatement about Trump. So the second one is a misstatement about Hillary. Okay. So Hillary Clinton said specifically, twenty five percent of Trump voters were deplorable. It's not true. She said half were. So, um, we have here a claim and, uh, the, the claim is saying she said 25%, but, uh, it should, it should be a hundred percent, right? So it's, it's an opinion piece. You shouldn't read this as a news piece because it's opinion, it's opinion. Like it's, you know, th there's a problem in modern America where like a lot of news are lab are actually opinion, you know, they're labeled as news, but they're actually opinion. And that's sort of like an ongoing issue with news in America these days where, you know, you're, you're watching a news broadcast, but really the news broadcaster is injecting their personal opinion into the news. This is labeled opinion, right? So, um, uh, Hillary Clinton, far under shutter estimate, only 25% of Trump supporters are deplorable, right? And so it's, it's a misquote of Hillary. So again, this is uh, false, right? So, uh, people, people misquote people all the time and, uh, you know, again, to be uh, charitable to the person, it's probably just a simple mistake. They, for whatever reason, they just weren't, um, they didn't fact check. You know, that said, it is NBC. It's NBC. It's not like uh, some person's blog. You know what I mean? Like NBC, NBC should have fact checkers that look at these things and, you know, make sure they don't make mistakes. I wish the news was more like Anchorman. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody who grew up in San Diego, you know, uh, yeah. uh, what news stations can we trust? That's a great question. Um, the, uh, the answer is complicated, right? Because even if let's, let's say that even if a, a news station doesn't like make a mistake like this, I, I don't want to say they're lying for neither of those. Do I actually want to say they're lying because lying implies that it's like deliberate deception. You know, it, I would say both of these were mistakes, right? I think the American Association of Museums got confused and they read the guidance, not knowing the executive order didn't actually say these things. And then the reportage on the Texas thing, I think made the same mistake as a result of that, if I'm going to be charitable to them, I think it's just a mistake, not lying in both cases. Uh, but even if, even if they do the fact checking and they say it's 50% instead of uh, 25%, the there, there's still many different ways that bias can kind of creep into news. And, um, you know, you, you can have bias in terms of who you interview, right? So if you're doing a news story on some thing up for debate in the Capitol, which Republican you interview, which Democrat you, you interview is going to shade your story, right? Because if you pick somebody who's bad at presenting their case, and you pick somebody on the other side that's good at presenting their case, that party will look better, you know, and how do you, you know, but ostensibly you've picked one Democrat and one Republican, you're balanced, you're being fair and balanced. You're giving both sides the, opp the opportunity to present their case, but by picking somebody who's like, whoo, you know, out there, then, uh, you've made their side look weak. And, uh, then you have somebody who's very articulate on the other side and you make their side look good. And, that's just one way I, I was in journalism for a couple of years. There, there's many, many different ways. There's sort of this like subtle bias that can creep in. Um, there's topical bias whereby just the choice of what we're talking about comes in. And we're going to have a whole lecture on, on this later on. Don't worry about it. Uh, you don't have to memorize this for now, but there's topical bias in, in terms of like what stories you run, you know? So, um, are we talking about, um, how the shutdown of the Keystone pipeline XL, the key, the XL Keystone Keystone XL pipeline, uh, how the shutdown of that by the Biden administration has put uh, hardworking oil workers out of work. Is that what we're talking about? Because you know, 
it's probably true. There's probably people that have lost their houses, and you can do a, a news story on, um, you know, these people that are, you know, out of work and looking for jobs and stuff like that. Or you can do a story on the Native Americans that were arrested for protesting the Keystone XL pipeline, which is also perfectly true, and no, you know, bias in terms of like lying about the events. But the choice of what topics you present, right? If you talk about the Native Americans that were arrested for protesting the pipeline, that's obviously sympathetic to their cause. And if you uh, talk about the oil workers that are put out of work, it's obviously sympathetic to their cause. And so the perspective and what topics you pick and the people you interview, um, there's all sorts of ways that bias can sneak in. Now, a good ethical news agency would work to combat those biases and actually work to try to have a good representative for both sides and to you know try to balance topical issues and things like that it's really hard though so um you know there's different analyses over who's biased and part of the discussion of who's biased involves the bias of the person who's evaluating the bias of other people because in general if somebody if you say that something has a right-wing bias that typically means they're more right-wing than you if you say that something is a left-wing bias it typically means they're just more left-wing than you. And so it's a really, really tricky to, to problem to solve, you know? So, uh, arguably NPR is, uh, is pretty good. They do have some topical bias, but they do tend to be pretty fair on, on most issues, at least that I've seen in recent years, it might've changed a little bit. Um, I haven't listened to NPR too much since the t pandemic started because I'm in my car less. I, I usually listen to NPR in my car. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, Morales, Brian Morales said, the best way of combating it is just to have a wide news intake, right? So to listen to media from across the political spectrum, right? A Republican source, a Democrat source, a libertarian source, and a socialist source. You know, if you do that, and it, it'll be painful to you too. Like if you're a socialist, listening to a libertarian, uh, like, I don't know, PJ Media or whoever it is, uh, it, it feels like holy water and a vampire. It's like, ah, it burns, you know, and same thing for a libertarian listening to like Pacifica radio, which is like a, a socialist, uh, a news source. It's like, ah, sunlight burning a vampire, you know? Uh, but it's, it's, it's good for you because they talk about things that you just don't hear in from any other place. They will talk about topics that you will not hear otherwise, you know? So, uh, you know, uh, uh, a libertarian news source is not going to run any positive stories on North Korea. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, it, even, even though it like burns your brain a little bit, you know, it's like, you know, usually there's some good point being made, even if, even if you disagree with your fundamental premise, premise, capitalism is good. Capitalism is evil. Somebody's going to dis disagree with one of those two, you know what I mean? Uh, they will still be presenting, you know, issues that you probably just haven't heard. Okay. So, uh, so, 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 um, yeah. And so what I'm trying to do with this quiz here is to show you guys, it's not just about, um, look, there's a source, there's a reputable source, Ow. just elbowed my desk. There's a reputable source from, uh, uh, from the, the museums. It's true. You got it. The, the, your instinct should be to go to the root of the matter. There's a claim about this executive order, find the executive order, see if it's true or not. And that, and if you do that, then you will be far less vulnerable to these, um, I guess you'd call them like predatory political memes. Cause what a meme is, by the way, what a meme is, isn't like a funny image. What a meme is, it was a term uh, coined by Richard Dawkins, who was a preeminent, uh, British, uh, atheist, but before he became famous for being an atheist and writing like the God delusion and books like this, the selfish gene, um, he was famous for inventing the theory of memes and what a meme is. It's a mimetic virus. A meme is the equivalent of a virus that spreads from person to person, from thought to thought, from brain to brain. And so somebody posts onto Facebook, um, Trump has banned critical race theory in his executive order. Somebody reblogs that, retweets it, reshares it, and it spreads through the social media. That's why we call it going viral, because it's based on Dawkins' theory of, of mimetic viruses or memes. 
And so nowadays a meme means like, you know, you've got a picture of a cat or something with some impact bold font on it. But that's not actually what a meme is. A meme is anything that spreads virally through social media from person to person. So meme magic. Um, yeah. And so um, I know a lot of Republicans that think that Hillary said that everybody was deplorable, right? She called us all deplorables. Well, no, her, her, her actual quote, because uh, I've been defending Trump, I'm now going to defend Hillary. Her actual quote was very broadly speaking or, or something along those lines. Like, I'm just going to grossly overgeneralize and say that half of the people you can put into a basket of deplorables. Like, she, she made it very clear she was just making a non, you know, scientific, non-technical claim, right? And uh, and then that got spread through the memeverse as, like, she called all Republicans deplorable. And um, if you want to uh, inoculate yourself, if you want to be immune to, maybe not immune, but, you know, have a good immune system to memes like that, like, that are hostile, like, actively non-true, false, fake news, and we'll talk about the whole fake news thing probably this semester. If you want to inoculate yourself against fake news, you have to develop the habit of getting after the original source and, and seeing if the way that people are presenting the source actually matches reality. And if it does, then go ahead and retweet or reblog or reshare uh, whatever it is that was posted. Uh, my, my, my general rule for social media is that I, I don't share anything. I, everything I post on social media is my own original content. Pretty simple. Every so often, like maybe once every two years, there'll be like some news article that I'll find interesting, like, um, um, you know, something like Edward Snowden or something like that. Uh, then I'll, I'll just post that headline myself. I don't reshare it from anybody else because I figure if I don't reshare anything, then I can't be part of the memetic network. Okay. Do you guys understand? Things are taken out of context and exaggerated. It spreads misinformation. Yeah. So as long as you just don't share anything, like you can't be part of a misinformation, disinformation network. Just if everything you put on social media is original content, then yeah, it seems seems pretty safe to me. I don't know. I don't see any idea. I don't see any reason to share my IP address. Yeah. Uh, audio cut out. Yeah. Um, just don't summon questionable things to it. That's funny. Um, reminds me of SCPs when they talk about medic effects. Yeah, that's where it, that's where it came from. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, there's the mystery flesh pit, of course. <laughs> there you go. Here's here's the mystery flesh pit. <laughs> there you go. If you if you're into SCP type stuff, you can uh, go to Mystery Flesh Pit uh, National Park. <laughs> So it's a fun thing to read about. Okay, so uh, we got 13 minutes left. People who are not on social media are the smartest ones in the room. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it, you can be on social media and not be part of the memetic network. You know what I mean? Like, I like treating social media like it is a press release, right? Like, I am going to release to uh, the general public news that, uh, you know, something, right? Uh, I have uh, earned my black belt in karate or something like that. You know what I mean? That's that's what I see social media for. It, it allows me to see what my friends around the country are doing. And and maybe, maybe you all are uh, maybe a little too young for this, but it, it's actually really sad when you have friends from like high school and college and then you graduate and you sort of diffuse around the country, right? It's kind of neat because if I go to Phoenix, I could just stay at a friend's house. If I go to D.C., New Jersey, I've got friends, Seattle... I've got friends all over the country, and that's kind of cool. So I can just like, hey, I'm going to be in town. You want to get dinner? Can I stay at your house? You know, you don't have to pay for a hotel room. You get to catch up and stuff like that. But it's kind of sad too because you don't get to see your friends anymore. You know, like you were friends for four years in in uh, in college, and um, you know, my best man. He lives in Orange County, so I, I rarely get to see him these days. You know, it's 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 kind of a sad thing. And so social media is a way for me to see. Oh, look. This guy that I was friends with in uh, eighth grade, he's now a news reporter in, in Virginia, you know, and so I get to see him do news reporting there. You know, it's just kind of cool. So, 
uh, memes aren't good anymore. Well, I mean, the memes that we post on the memes channel are like the funny jokes and things like that, you know, but the original, the original meaning of meme was the mimetic virus, you know, and, and, and the, the reason why the jokes are called memes is because when somebody comes up with a good meme, it spreads, right? So somebody posts it onto some social media site and if it goes viral, it spreads and then, you know, it'll pop up all over the place. You know what I mean? So it's not like, it's not like the jokes are really that bad. Although sometimes they will convey fake news or misinformation or whatever. Um, you know, in general, the humorous stuff, I don't see any, any harm in it. I feel we sliding away and there's nothing we can do. It's, it's, it's just really sad. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, you know, social media is a way for you to just kind of like, Oh look, he has a kid now. And, um, you know, the kid's swimming and that's cool. You know, it's just, it's just nice, you know, so you don't have to just call people up because who, who calls people anymore? You know what I mean? Okay. Um, uh, do you think that fat checking bots to take down misinformation should exist? That's a great question. That's a topic for another time too. Okay. So let's go through, uh, we got 10 minutes left. Let's go through a couple more claims. Um, yeah, the whole misinformation fake news thing. That's, that's a class right there. That's a, that's a hot class. Cause, um, like with what went on with the Reddit yesterday with, um, various subreddits, uh, asking the uh, Reddit admins to block misinformation, censoring Reddit. Yeah, that's a, that's a hot topic right now. Yeah. Mosquitoes don't like Skrillex. Yeah, as far as I can tell, it's true. I, I mean, it's just one study, so um, maybe, maybe who knows? Like, you, you would need to replicate it. You know, maybe play Dead Mouse. I don't know, you know. Try different kinds of EDM to see if they all repel mosquitoes, or if it's just specifically... Skrillex that mosquitoes hate, you know, science wants to know, it, it, do they just not like the music of Skrillex or is it, is it other people? Uh, <laughs> the websites are allowed to do what they want as long as they're not a government organization. Sure. But should they? Right. And that's, and that's the whole thing. Like Reddit is like, you know, we're not going to censor people, but all the people, the moderators of these big subreddits are saying, no, we're going to go black. We're going to have a boycott. Maybe if you, if you don't. And so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. So, okay. So, uh, number six, teenagers like eating Tide Pods because their brains are not developed. What do you guys think? True or false? Just knee jerk reaction without looking into sources on things. Um, do you think this is true or false? Everybody's saying false. Okay. Very false. So the source for this is actually from Harvard. And uh, so here's Harvard Harvard's blog, right? Harvard Health Publishing. Why teenagers eat Tide Pods. <laughs> this came out at the height of the Tide Pod meme frenzy. I don't know anybody that ate a Tide Pod, but we were all certainly very convinced that teenagers everywhere were eating Tide Pods. Um, do any of you know anybody that ate, uh, uh, Tide Pods? It used to be a trend. It was a trend. It was a meme. Do you know, you ate a few? Okay. Well, never mind. I take it back then. Um, the whole Tide Pod thing was so dumb. They got caps lock on. They look like gushers. Uh, forbidden snacks. Yeah. Um, why DuckDuckGo? Because, uh, privacy. So, uh, so privacy is kind of a thing, you know. DuckDuckDo doesn't doesn't track you. Google does. And if you use Chrome, if you use uh, Internet Explorer, uh, that's why I use Firefox with DuckDuckGo. It's it's the most it's the best solution if you care about privacy online. And we, we can talk about private. We will talk about privacy later in this class. Okay. So here we have. It's been on the news recently. Teens are eating Tide detergent pods, despite the fact that eating them can be lethal. They filmed themselves doing it. It's the Tide Pod Challenge. So it's not like they don't know it can be dangerous. Da -da 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 -da. The real problem is the adolescent brain. And then they go into, you know, uh, the last part to develop is the frontal lobe. You know, so they go into the whole neuroscience of brain development. And they say that the reason why teenagers are eating Tide Pods is because their frontal lobe or it's a part of the brain that's like, no, nah, man, that's not a good idea. 
It's like an invincible meme. Think, think. Um, yeah, so that's Harvard. They say that's why teenagers like eating Tide Pods, because they have poor self-control due to being smooth brand. Okay. So. Invincible is a good good show. I don't know if, if any of you uh, have seen it, but... Um, pretty pretty violent like if you're expecting like a normal superhero cartoon it is, it is not really um season two is in the works nice 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 yeah super bloody super bloody uh i i enjoyed it though there is a uh, the, the the teen drama was kind of annoying i guess i'm sorry i'm sorry just apologizing all the time okay but that's because his brain was not developed I'll just be honest Invincible ate too many Tide Pods. It's just the only explanation. Okay, so <clears throat> is the claim true? I don't know. Uh, by the way, I, uh, <laughs> I actually don't know the answer to a lot of these things. Is it true that mosquitoes don't like Skrillex? I don't know. I am not a mosquito. Um, <laughs> uh, I, have, I have seen a study on the matter. And so my, my approach to these things is that if, you, if there's a peer-reviewed study that came out and mosquitoes not liking Skrillex is on Science Direct, which isn't necessarily the most believable website, but it, there it is. Um, this one's from Nature, like Tetris. I guess I should capitalize Tetris. Um, this one is um, from Nature. Nature is a highly reputable news, like like a science, um, you know, magazine. It's it's probably the most reputable one there is. So I'm inclined to believe it. You know, it, it's one of those things. There, there's. Um, the, the trouble is, is that there's other studies that show the opposite. You know what I mean? So if you've got four studies that are weaker that show that Tetris creates what's called the winner effect. So when you win, you get this burst of dopamine and testosterone. If there's multiple studies showing that winning at Tetris does that, and then one that doesn't, but it's higher quality, who do you believe? Like that's dicey. You know, that's that's one of the um, un it's uncertainty. You know, it's it's one of you know, so if you're asking me what I believe, it's like, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm inclined to believe, you know, it needs more work, <laughs> it needs more study, you know, so I don't know if that's true or not. And that's why when I gave you the quiz, I gave you two things that were unequivocally, unequivocally, unequivocally false, right? Both of the claims made were lies, 100%, or not lies, or errors, they're false. Okay, things like this, like, I don't know. You tell me why you like eating them. I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, Windex looks like Gatorade. Yeah, more more forbidden snacks, right? Uh, so, almost all Dilly Bravels have cocaine on them. Almost all dollar bills have cocaine on them. What do you think? I heard this when I was a kid, actually. You should always wash your hands after handling dollar bills because they almost all have cocaine on them. And uh, as it turns out, yeah, this is true. I, uh, this one I actually am going to go out on a limb and say is true. I've actually read multiple studies on it, and it's somewhere in the in the range of 70% to 90% of dollar bills have trace elements of cocaine on them. Part of the problem is that when they run through the bill sorters, uh, cocaine will spread. Like if somebody snorts cocaine using a dollar bill, then the residue will spread to other dollar bills. I don't know if it's enough to get you high, the bigger problem is the amount of feces found on dollar bills as well. Yay! What's in the class on that note? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, use use credit cards. <laughs> so, excuse me. Um, yeah. I, I was digging into this because I thought it was an urban legend. right? Because I, when I was making this presentation, I was thinking about all these things they told me when I was a kid. Like, you got to brush your teeth. That turned out to be true. That's actually pretty important. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I remember like, oh yeah, everyone, uh, everyone would tell me that there's cocaine on dollar bills. So you should always wash your hands. turns out you should wash your hands because they, they pick up bacteria. Um, but, uh, the, the amount of cocaine on them, I don't think is enough to get people high. Uh, if they do find dollar bills that have a lot of cocaine on them, they take them out of circulation apparently. But, uh, there are trace amounts of cocaine on stuff. So that turned out to be something I thought was an urban legend that I looked up multiple studies. I'm like, mm, nope. It's uh, it's true apparently. So, uh, yeah, that's why you see me walking around town, making it rain all the time. 
I'm just trying to get rid of all the... <laughs> I brush my teeth, I swear. You should brush your teeth. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's, your parents weren't lying to you when they told you to brush your teeth every day. Yeah. Or multiple times a day. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, we got one minute left. Let's do this. Claim number eight. In the late 1990s, Hotmail's entire data center only had about 10 terabytes in the entire data center. Uh, bonus claim, my personal computer right now has 27 terabytes. Source, me. Do you believe your press professor or is your professor lying to you? This is something I did last semester. I had students all believe, I, I told them that uh, I had a shirt on that was like navy colored and I told them that it was black. And they're like, no, it looks navy. I'm like, no, no, it's black, I swear. You know, and uh, and they're all believing me. And I'm like, I, I lied to you, it's actually, it's actually purple. And they're like, oh, dang it. You know, how dare you? And then I'm like, no, it's actually navy. And they're like, I don't know what to believe. I'm like, you're looking at it right here. You have video evidence. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you have video evidence. And, uh, and they were like, ah, you know, I don't know what to, I don't know what to believe anymore. You know, so uh, I may or may not have 27 terabytes of storage. I will tell you it's true. I don't know if you should believe. So I'm confused. So false, 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 false. Everything's a lie. Yeah, there's, there's a guy on the server called er Doubt Everything Hammond. Is what he, he changed his username. Uh, after that last year. Yeah, the dress, the, the blue and gold dress or whatever. Fake news, teach me. So the source for the first claim uh, came from a friend of mine who worked at Hotmail. He worked in Hotmail in 2004, 2005, something like that. That's when he started working there. And so he said, yeah, it sounds about right that it, that it had about 10 terabytes. He found a Wikipedia page that had that claim in it. He's like, yeah, it seems about right. Because back then your mailbox had a limit of like two megabytes or something. Like you couldn't have like attachments basically at all on it. And you know, your email box would fill up constantly. So, of course, so there you go. I'm, at, uh, I'm not lying to you about that. A friend of mine at Hotmail has confirmed this claim off Wikipedia to the best of his knowledge. It's probably around there, ballpark. Okay. I don't think that more, more than five terabytes were available in nineties for the servers. Uh, they had lots and lots of hard drives. They would probably have scads of 100 megabyte hard drives back then or something, you know. Is there an assignment tonight? Of course, there is an assignment every day. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a couple more claims to evaluate. Then we'll maybe move on to something else on Monday. Okay. Yeah, the the uh, colorblind test. So do you, do you believe me? Do you believe that I, I have 27 terabytes of storage right now? I'm going to tell you it's true. So do you believe me? I'm your professor. You can trust me. You totally trust me. Nobody trusts me. What would it take? Here's a question. What would it take for me to convince you that my computer has 27 terabytes of storage on it right now? I got three monitors. No, I only have two monitors. I mean, technically I own more, but I have, I have a dual monitor set up right now. There's not enough room on my desk for, for three monitors. Go to storage space and settings. Kearney, buy me lunch. You're buying me lunch, dude. You're paying me to do this. What? Yeah, your tuition money is funding my uh, my uh, computer habits, man. All right, so here we go. Uh, so my my C drive is an eight terabyte SSD. Uh, it's kind of nice. Then I've got a two, oh, uh, let's go back up here. So we got an eight terabyte SSD here. We got a two terabyte uh, spinny disk. We got a five terabyte, or sorry, five gigabyte? No, 250, this is a 250 gigabyte. These things always round down due to formatting, right? So that's eight plus two is 10 terabytes. That's 250 gigs, which is a quarter terabyte. That's half a terabyte SSD. This is a 15 terabyte spinny disk. So 10, 25, 26, and... Uh, or, no, maybe it's a 16. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 16 because it, it gets formatted down. Yeah, it's 27 terabytes. Or, you know, it depends if you want to check me on the rounding down, but the, the drives physically have 27 terabytes of storage in it um, prior to losing, you know, a little bit of storage due to the formatting. Someone's a file hoarder. No, somebody does game development. So I teach, I teach game development and it constantly fills up my hard drive. And so I'm like, forget about this. I'm buying a 16 terabyte spinny disk. I'm buying an eight terabyte SSD. Let's do this. 
And uh, then after I installed them, I, 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 I talked to my friend, like, hey, just out of curiosity, like, how much harder of space did, did Hotmail have? You know, he's like, yeah, it was around 10 in the 90s, you know. I'm like, I got more, I got more storage in my PC right now than, you know, all of Hotmail had back then by a factor of three almost. So, uh, do you have a beta for us to test? What, which one do you keep the games on? They go on the SSD. Games go on the SSD. But like uh, when students submit projects and things like that, you're talking like five gigs per student project. And I've got like 20 students in a class. You're talking like 100 gigs per semester of just student work, not counting all the art assets and things like that I download, which are also expansive. You know, like one uh, Paragon character that I download to use in a game is five gigabytes, you know, for one bit of art. You know, game development is incredibly lethal on your hard drive. And so I was just like, forget about this. I'm tired of constantly having to, move files around and uninstall Red Dead or whatever to make room for game development. I'm just going all out. I'm just going to buy the biggest things that I have. Bulk storage goes on the spinny disk. Games, things I'm developing go on the SSD. Okay. So uh, you should double it every year. Um, COD is 200, 200 gigs. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. It, you know. So anyway. So that's, that's class for today. So hopefully I've justified to you that I wasn't lying to, to you about it. Of course, that could have just been a fake screenshot. I could have, I could have faked that whole thing. You know, <laughs> let's go to this PC. There we go. Just gonna screenshot that. You know, pull it up here. Seventeen terabytes. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. Photographic evidence that I have a eighteen terabyte SSD. <laughs> doctored screenshot yeah. yeah yeah so but i hope that i hope that helps you understand like what it means to be a critical thinker at the most basic level somebody makes a claim and you need to evaluate it and try your best to figure out if it's true or false that's it's it's a hard thing to do sometimes but i, I really want you to to try so your quiz due on monday it's going to be two more of these quiz questions where you're going to have to like dig around figure out if it's true or not okay Cloud gaming, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me if you got an RTX 30 series. Maybe I'm lying about this too, who knows? I'll just leave that there for you guys. <clears throat> I teach game development. Game development pays for my computer habit. Don't rob me, please. <laughs> I've got a security system on my house. <laughs> All right. So, uh, did you say there was an assignment every day? Yes. Uh, every day means class day. Every class day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, um, there will be three assignments per week, if that makes sense to you. I shall follow your path. Location secured. Yeah. <laughs> you have an EV, EVGA for the Win 3. I think that's one that I have, actually. So, I got it below MSRP, which was nice, too. That was, that was cool. Okay. Uh, we'll be, be starting our book. Um, nope. I'll do that on Monday. Yeah, take, take, take the weekend off. I'll just give you... I'll give you one more quiz like the last one where you can... I, I really want you to get experience like digging into primary sources and things like that because that's really the heart and soul of critical thinking. If you can do that, the rest of the semester is easy. Okay. Timed or no? Nah. I'll give you all the time in the world you want to dig into it. Okay. Off topic, but the, is, but the uh, Kearney doubt, is this actually you? Yeah, they. I don't know why the only emoji they made of me on the server is me like frowning, like disapprovingly at somebody because that's kind of not my personality at all, but... Yeah, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I guess it's funny, but you know, it's just it's just an odd choice of of emoji. <laughs> Everyone's posting on Facebook. <laughs> All right, just for that, I'll make the quiz extra easy. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a meme. It's a meme. All right. I'll see you guys on Monday. Okay.